everybody's talking about bidirectional power transfer in ISO 1511-8-20. Let's take a closer look at the implementation of the new standard in our smart charging station controllers VSEC. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm the product manager of our VSEC controllers. And I'm Timo, I'm a developer on the VSEC team and together we have implemented bidirectional power transfer over the past month as standardized in the new ISO 1511-8-20. And this is exactly what we want to demonstrate to you today. So Timo, I see that you've brought quite some hardware here. This is our hardware in the loop test system, which is customized to our needs because we use it to test the new features of our VSEC controllers. Um, you can see the VT system over there, as well as the smart charging modules and a connection to the VSEC. So these black cables connect to the VSEC and then the VSEC is connected with an Ethernet cable to the test PC. And what do we have on there? Uh, Canoe runs on this PC. So with the smart charging modules, you can simulate V2G communication either from an EV or an EVSE's point of view. And as you can see here, you can turn on or off BPT within the simulation and even set the discharging power. So in the future, there will be a standardized way to do that using OCPP 2.1, but the VSEC already allows you to set the discharging and charging power using OCPP 201 and even OCPP 1.6. So let's see a Dash 20 charging loop in action. I see that we've got everything connected, we've got canoe running, and we see that the vehicle currently has a state of charge of 75%. So let's plug in the vehicle and I see there's a lot going on. Yes, indeed, there are a lot of things happening. So let me quickly pause the trace right here and scroll back up so we can have a closer look at some of the messages which you might already recognize from a Dash 2 charging loop. Um, so first up, we have the supported app protocol request where the V signals that we want to charge with ISO Dash 20 and the EVSE accepts. Um, after the session has been set up, the EV then gets authorized to charge which actually happens earlier than previously in the Dash 2. After that, the EVSE offers various services to the vehicle, which we can see over here. And there I see the new service DC BPT. Exactly. And now the EV gets all curious about the new DC BPT service, so it requests some additional details about it, which the EVSE then provides in this set of parameters here. Oh wow, and these are quite some new parameters. So from the ISO 1511-8-2, I already know the connector type extended. And in my previous video, I've already explained the dynamic control mode. But what are the others? So the mobility needs mode signals if the EV or the EVSE can provide additional mobility needs information, such as a target SOC or a departure time. Uh, pricing is pretty self-explanatory. Right now we're charging for free. Um, the BPT channel selection set to unified means that we're charging and discharging over the same channel. And the generator mode set to grid following means that the whole system is not grid forming, which can influence the charging patterns and is therefore valuable information for the EV to know about. And the charge parameter discovery has been extended with the limits for discharging. So the EV now sends its minimum and maximum current and power for the discharging. And the next message is the schedule exchange. I remember from the Dash 2 that the charging schedule was there a part of the charge parameter discovery. And here it's different? Uh, correct. Um, so the EV can now send a minimum SOC, so it never gets discharged beyond that limit. And also the EV provides its minimum and maximum energy for the discharging itself. So the cable check and the pre-charge messages we already know from the ISO 1511-8-2. When we enter the power delivery, now in this case, the EV delivers power to the infrastructure and not the other way around. And when we finally reach the charge loop, the EV now sends its discharging limits to the EVSE and we recognize these limits from the charge parameter discovery we just looked at a few moments ago. So I see that we've successfully discharged our vehicle. And if we want to discharge even more, is a dynamic adaptation of these values possible? Yes, so this is actually the whole point of the dynamic control mode, to flexibly adapt to the local situation. So if I take the role of the CSMS here and decide to change the discharging power from 3.7 kilowatts to let's say 10 kilowatts, I can then press this button, send the OCPP message to the VSEC, and as you can see, the current changes and we're now discharging at a much faster rate than before. 
So this was one straight ahead discharging cycle. Thanks a lot Timo for walking us through these quite remarkable changes and thanks to you for watching. Start exploring bidirectional power transfer with our reset controllers. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.